Hello and welcome, one and all, and we are back with yet another episode of Kamen Rider Saber. This time we are on episode 27, Sorrow, Turn It Into a Smile. So basically, following the events of last week's episode, Toma is all on board with trying to help the spirit stuck inside of you know, the, pr- the primitive dragon book, which is the spirit of an actual dragon? Like, apparently, actual dragons at one point existed either here or in Wonderworld, and they were wiped out by humans, and this is the last dragon, although it's sealed in a book, or at least that's its story. I I don't know if the spirit is an actual being that existed, or if it's just a spirit born of a story, considering the nature of this show. <laughs> mm. Anyway... Uh, Toma's dedicated to trying to save the boy, and so he decides to put himself in in hyperbolic time chamber in order to basically force himself into into transforming where no one else can get hurt and just repeatedly do it until he can basically brute force his way into resolving the issue, which it's a method, and they put this man under the heat lamps because he is sweating. (laughs) At the same time, uh, the Megiddo... Storyels is powering up Legiel by adding an extra page to his book, and we get to see the the Legiel book, and it's kind of a it's very similar to a Wonder Ride book, although it's an alter book. Uh, it says its line, and Legiel transforms into its into his new form, which basically is his death flag. He's going to die because this, when the general gets a power up new form. And it's not the end game, and it's not a uh, give out to all the generals form. He's he's gonna die, and so he does in this episode. But we'll get to it uh, anyway. Lake Gill's big plan: go to the middle of the city and wreck shit until he just draws out Saber for a fight. Uh, while that hap- while he does do that, uh, everyone goes to fight except for the you know, Dysenji because he can't transform into Slash and. Uh, Kento and Rin, Tar- Kento and Rintaro also show up and just kind of watch on the sidelines for the for a good minute of the fight. And a lot of this episode is really the fight, and I kind of like that because it's a really cool fight. I honestly, do like Legiel's new form. It's a kind of cool, a uh, very colorful form. <laughs> uh, anyway, Toma doesn't exactly get it right away, and so he has to run off to try to join the others and hopefully potentially find a way to you know, tame Primitive Dragon while running to the scene. Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't exactly work out because when he gets there on the scene, he still rampages and loses control of himself. And, well, he ends up kind of stuck in a minute and both Yuri and... Uh, both Yuri and Ryo, Ogami, are kind of pushed aside by Legiel, who tries to deliver a finisher to kill to kill Toma. Why am I having difficulty with names right now? And then Rintaro shows up and does something for the first time in quite a long time and actually fights Legiel to protect Toma. And I honestly really like this because Rintaro needs to do something. <laughs> uh, anyway, meanwhile, Toma is yet again in the book world, meeting with the kid who... Basically has been turning into his dragon form and burning Toma. But Toma pushes himself through the flames and basically gets the dragon a cool down hug and tells him that he isn't alone by kind of basically telling him that the, the the wind, the trees, and everything else, they're his friends too. And so he calms down and joins hands with Toma and this creates the Elemental Dragon Book. And so... You know, after Rentaro loses to Legiel, because Legiel's just that damn strong, uh, Toma uses the Primitive Dragon book with the el- Elemental the elemental Dragon book and transforms into the Elemental Dragon form. Which, it makes me wonder, does Elemental Dragon only work with Primitive Dragon, or could it work by itself? And on that aside, can Primitive Dragon also work by itself now without using Emotional Dragon? Or is it still an out-of-control rampaging form? Uh, in terms of suits, I'm going to be honest, uh, uh, Elemental Dragon does look pretty cool, but considering the fact this is supposed to be a mix of the two suits, I would prefer more of the bone motif from Primitive Dragon to carry over into Elemental, 
Instead, it's mostly just elemental dragon and only like some of the bone motif from primitive, like around the arms and the legs and like the claw on the chest. And we don't even get to see a, another claw on the chest to represent the other hand for primitive dragon because this book is supposed to be like the two hands holding hands. And I, and I kind of get why it's not there, but I'm just kind of sad, man. Like that would have looked that would have looked really cool and gone with the themes of the two you no know, the two books holding hands like on the belt. Also, that looks very bulky around the waist. <laughs> and he's still doing jumps and flips and shit, and I'm just like, dear guy, your center of balance, man. Where is it? I wonder how heavy it is in the actual prop, not the toy release. The toy release is probably going to be pretty light. But I wonder how the heavy the actual prop for the fights is. <laughs> anyway, uh, Elemental Dragon for his first debut fight, obviously, uh, dominates. And cue the name Elemental Dragon. It has the power of all the elements that we've seen up until now. I mean, we see him use water, obviously fire. We see him use wind a bit. A little bit of earth. And uh, also, maybe a little bit of sound i'm not 100 percent on that i would love for this to represent like all the bonds toma has made with the other swordsmen but considering the fact that rin is still kind of uh, a dipshit right now it really doesn't feel that way and i wonder if he can also use light darkness and smoke as well as whatever the last sword element is wait what is falchion's element if not just more fire <laughs> Uh, because that movie's canon. Is, is its element life? Does that mean Toma has a redo? Because, you know, immortal, an immortal swordsman and all that kind of stuff. Uh, stuff to be answered when eventually I can watch said movie. When does the DVD come out? Like, either later this month or n early next month? Uh, okay, anyway. <clears throat> so, Toma, you know, he beats Legiel. And there's an interesting moment in the middle of the fight where Toma basically says, You were human once. And Legio rejects the idea that he was ever human. Which means that, well, there's some memory loss that the Megado have. And considering who Storios is, I wonder if Storios erased Zuos's and Legio's memories in order to, you know, follow along with his own plans. Which, that has some implications right there. Because Storios is actually watching the fight and, you know, commenting on Legio's defeat. Also, when Legiel is dying, there is a bit of a flashback to the moment where him and the others arrived in Wonderworld. And they just seem generally happy. They seem generally happy to be there, view the world as beautiful. And it makes me question, what exactly happened to turn them into the Megado? Like, was it Storios being a dipshit and turning them evil with Ultra Books? Or did something happen and it caused a fracture between the group and that's what created the Megado? Uh, again, more questions being raised, which is mostly a good thing. Uh, I will say I would prefer the pace of the answers to come a bit quicker. That's just my personal taste. But, you know, Saber is actually answering his various questions and then raising a few more. I would really love this Luna question to be over with, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, you know, Legiel is defeated and he explodes. Because obviously, also I do want to mention at the beginning of the episode, Astorios tells him that, hey, Legiel, you know, this time when you lose, this is your last time. Not in the whole, it's more like the whole die when you're defeated thing from Build. And that's how it's kind of treated because he gets defeated and he dies. And I would have liked it if Thomas showed some response to the fact that he knows that the Megado, at least the ones that, you know, are the generals, we're at one point human, but he really doesn't seem to respond to that. Instead, he's being dragged back into the Primitive Dragon book world and meets with Tassel for the first time. Yes, Tassel has encountered Toma for the first time and tells him he needs to hurry up and find Luna because the world's on the brink of destruction. And he also thanks him for solving the Primitive Dragon thing, which, going back to way back when, a few episodes ago... Uh, you know, Yuri went to go see Tassel about Prim Dragon, and he said that we couldn't figure out how to fix the damn thing, so we had to see all the way. Which, you know, is interesting. Uh, I wonder if this means Tassel is dead and can only appear to Toma in Visions, or if he's just using his weird, I can go 
everywhere kind of power thing, considering the fact that he's kind of important to the overall plot now. I wonder if Tassel's the last swordsman. That would have been really it. That would be really fucking trippy. I know people were thinking he was Caliber when the preview images came out, and it turned out to be Kento. <laughs> I'm just saying that the thought of Caliber being Tassel would have been hilarious. Uh, anyway, overall, it was a fine episode. I like the fact to focus a lot more on a fight. I like that it raised some more questions and answered some minor questions, like, you know, why did Megado betray their whole group? They really didn't, or at least maybe the other two didn't. They might have been mind-controlled, or something might have happened to erase their memories, you know, stuff like that. It answered some questions and raised a few questions, you know, this is the right way to keep the story going. Uh, also, you know, Primitive Elemental Dragon suit looks pretty good. Honestly, I like Primitive Dragon a bit more, if only because, you no know, Rampage form and the whole bone motif. And Rintaro smiling. It has been a fucking long-ass time since I've seen this boy smile. I honestly missed it. I missed his goofy-ass grin. I remember way back in, like, the first few episodes, and he was grinning because he was happy and doing fun stuff. But, you know, now it's all serious, and he has this dope, mopey-ass look on his face. I'm just like... Holy crap, my boy smiled again. That's a goddamn miracle. <laughs> oh, God, I fucking missed that. Oh, Jesus. And the episode, also, he figures out what he wants to do, which hopefully means leaving the assholes and joining back up with his friends. And I really want that to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen, considering, you know, next week seems to be a Rentaro episode, not a Ren episode. But, you know... I'm happy... Did I just mix up Rentaro and Ren throughout the whole episode? No, I, mean, I mixed it up in that last sentence. The next episode's a Ren-focused episode, not a Rentaro-focused episode. He might just be a subplot in the episode. Uh, this is what happens when you have two characters with two similar names and they're both in important roles. This is why most stories tend to avoid that, but I guess it's fine in this case. Uh, so, yeah... I honestly wonder when Bax is going to show up and, you know, because, you no know, canon movie and shit, but, you know, uh, we'll find that out later. Oh, also, we are, I want to say now we're getting a yet another spinoff because apparently there are two Saber spinoffs and they're both focused on Swords of Logos. I think one is focused on... Uh, the secondary groups or secondary riders of the season, like you know, Buster Slash and you know, Kenzon and them doing some shit here or there. And the next special, besides that one, is focusing on the past wielders of the swords, which include you know, various uh, others, like various <laughs> uh, teachers to the current team. I wonder if this is also a manga tie-in because, you know, we do have the Buster manga, which focuses on a young Buster alongside his, uh, no, his teacher and his eventual wife, you know, or basically Sora's mother. Uh, is she still alive? Because we haven't seen her in the show, and that's now concerning, concerning the fact that now we know who she is, <laughs> at least in the manga. Uh, but yeah, I also wonder, yeah, it makes me wonder if they're going to have an actor play that character, or if Buster will be playing himself in that role, considering the fact that he is technically of that generation of sword wielders, as he's the oldest member of the current team, without a, you know, a someone to take up the role of Buster, unless he's planning to give it to Sora when he's older, which that would be kind of kick-ass, though unless, uh, Kento gets over and seals the sword away. So, yeah, we have a pretty, honestly, cool-looking special that base, that adds, uh, now, a female Kianzan. Like, the previous wielder for Kianzan was a woman, and I'm just like, wait, what does that look like? You know how suits tend to look either guy suits or girl suits. It makes me think Kianzan was meant to be a gender-neutral suit, which that would be interesting as all hell. Uh, I wonder if her suit would be taller, considering, you know, Ren's height. Compared to everyone else, and she seems to be a little bit taller than him. Uh, questions for watching the actual special, which I might talk about if I ever watch that. I, I will definitely have to talk about the movie, because, you no know, in-canon movie, <laughs> as the series likes to do. Anyhow, overall for the episode in and of itself, fine episode, pretty good points, cool fight, Elemental Dragon. 
I give it like a 7 out of 10 in terms of the suits, 9 out of 10 in terms of the first fight, and I'm wondering when it's going to start getting its ass kicked. It also makes me wonder what Toma's final form will be, considering uh, this is the form that apparently combines the powers of the other swords, or at least seems to. So I wonder what his final form will be, and if he'll just be running around with like two swords or a sword and a shield combo like... Like his uh, super form in the movie, because that came with the sword shield combo. Which, now that I think about it, why haven't we had someone have a sword shield combo? I mean, we've had entire. We've had. I think it was the. I can't pronounce it because it's very similar to another Sentai's name, where the dude's changer was like a sword and shield. And I'm surprised it just didn't decide to recast that mold and do it for another writer. I'm not gonna say. Which, honestly. I would, I'm not, I'm surprised they have it considering how many times they like to reuse the same mold for the arrow that shows up in almost every season. Except for this one, unless someone pulls an arrow out of their ass later on for a power-up. Probably Kian's on. <laughs> anyway, I'll see all of you guys in the next episode, which, get ready to see Rin yelling his eyes out and hopefully he'll get some character development. I doubt it though, but hopefully I can hope.